Hello, uh, my name's Simon. I'm going to show you how to perform a, a paracord grab strap wrap. Uh, before I get started, I just want to point out a couple of things. First of all, I'm recording this with a, a Galaxy S3. Uh, my normal video camera isn't working at the moment, so I figured, you know, any port in a storm, might as well use what I've got. The other thing is, uh, I ask that you forgive any coughing uh, or sneezing that may occur during the recording because I currently have flu. Uh, this is the first time I've been able to speak properly in a while and uh, it's taken an awful lot of uh, an awful lot of this cordial stuff to uh, to make that happen. Mm. And uh, I apologize if I stop to have a drink halfway through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, on to the job. Okay, so we have a grab strap. Most packs, any good pack, will come with a grab strap. So these are kind of universal. Uh, I put a, a climbing um, carabiner on this one, which is a good thing to have. So I'm going to take that off because that's going to get in the way. So goodbye. Uh, and this is uh, a Maxpedition Jumbo Versa pack. It's it's a nice pack. It's a new one. This is my missus. Uh, it's my fiance's. EDC pack. I also have mine. Bear with me. I'll show you mine, which has been done already. Oops. Hang on. Something done. I hang mine on the back of my chair uh, so that it's always available. Okay. So this this is mine, uh, which I've I've done this paracord wrap on. So that that's before. And this is after, and with my carabiner. So as you can see, this uh, this arrangement works quite well. Uh, it gives you a nice, thick, strong handle that you can use. Uh, this is a, a double double wrap, and that's what I'm going to be showing you with this bag here. So I'll just pop that out of the way. Uh, okay, so. The first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a length of paracord. Um, ideally, with this, I'd have wanted to have used khaki, but I don't have a khaki length of paracord at the moment. It won't arrive until Monday, uh, so I'm stuck with uh, forest uh, or woodland camo, I think this one is. Uh, that's a hundred foot less whatever I use to do mine, so less about, I don't know, 15 to 25 feet. Um, what I've done with this is I've made something called a quick rope configuration where I can just pull this and it will unfeed my paracord uh, in length so I'm not going to unfeed too much because I need to measure first so now I've come up with a formula uh, to determine how much paracord you need to to do a wrap uh, but I'll get to that in a second the other thing you're going to need is either a pair of scissors doesn't matter how good they are so long as they can cut uh, uh, or uh, better yet, uh, a good multi-tool with either a non-serrated or a, uh, a serrated serrated blade. Okay, I'm going to use a serrated, so keep that one. This is a Gerber suspension for anybody wondering. Uh, it's, it's a nice piece of kit, but uh, that's not what this video is about, so I'm going to carry on. Okay, so we need to measure our paracord, and as I say, oh, sorry, just one more thing. Uh, you're also going to need a, a lighter to melt your ends. Uh, okay, so I don't actually know how long this is. It doesn't matter how long it is, but the formula is the length of the paracord plus the width or approximate width plus the, the diameter of your paracord, which I, I just round up to a half centimeter or about uh, 0.2 inches. Um, multiplied by 40 to do a double wrap. So multiply it by 20 will give you a single wrap, multiply it by 40 will give you a double wrap. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'll show you how I do this. I take the end of my paracord and I run it over by approximately the thickness, sometimes plus a little bit, of the strap. So I don't, you don't need any measuring devices to do this. I then follow the strap around with my length of paracord and I grab it with my thumb and forefinger 
or index finger, sorry, at the point, uh, the furthest point back of the strap. So now I have this is this is my my length. What I'm going to do is fold that over, and uh, I'm hoping I'm getting all this in frame, but I can't actually see the screen on this camera while I work. Okay, and then I'm just going to release some from the. Uh, oh, I've got a knot. Isn't that typical? There we go. Okay, then. I double that over, go to the bottom, I double that over, go back to the bottom, and I do this, repeat it, the same length each time, until I have 40 strands in fold. So, you know, that's two, that's four, that's six. So, so far I've got six lengths. I need 40, so I'm going to keep going. Um, and the key to this particular method of mine is that it creates a single long length of paracord on the strap that can be taken off and used again for you know in the field if you're ever in a situation where you need it so I just put that back up there and it takes a few minutes sometimes to to get it again you could be approximate you can go slightly over you don't want to go slightly under um, going slightly over will waste a little bit of paracord but you are going to get pretty close. I always err on the side of more, uh, just because you know I, I keep always keep at least a hundred feet of uh, yeah of solid rolled up paracord like like I showed you there um, of each color that I buy. So I don't mind if I have to take an active length, one that I'm working with, and uh, cut it into little like, lengths. So let's just check. I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, f oh, boy. 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. So we're not that far off. Some of them are slightly bigger, some of them are slightly smaller. I'm rushing this just to get you know the video done. You can take your time and get nice even lengths and you'll waste less paracord. Um, so do as I say, not as I do, kind of thing. Okay, so okay, let's. Uh, I forgot, I've lost count again. That's stupid. Okay, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-six. So, well, I'm just typing that up again. 38, 40, and if you can hear any noise in the background, that will be my dogs uh, jumping around, and possibly even one of my children sneaking out of a bedroom. Anyway, so that's the length I need. I'm going to take my trusty knife, and I'm going to cut it at the end of that length. Uh, let me do that better. Please bear in mind, again, like I say, I'm working at an awkward angle because I can't see the screen on this camera if I don't, so... I'm going to just quickly melt my ends, it's going to be rough, but you take your time and do a neat job. Uh, there we are, I'll just hang that over a piece of metal so it doesn't melt onto any of my fabric. I've uh, This is my, my work desk, my actual workstation where I do all my magic. Um, and I've just covered it over with my uh, kit bag, an empty kit bag, this, this lovely green green cloth you can see behind the bag is, is uh, a military kit bag. Okay, wet the end. Uh, what I did there was I licked my fingers and then just rubbed the end. Uh, you want to make sure you do it nice and quick so that you take the heat away without burning yourself. Okay, now I assume you all know how to melt the ends on paracord. Okay, so we don't need any more of this, which is now hanging loose. I'll tie that back up later. We have a long length, a very long length of paracord here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half. Now I find the easiest way to do that is to drop the rest on the floor, grab one end, and then pull, holding my end, pull the rest, release any knots on the way up, until I find the other end, and then I'm holding both ends. 
again it, it's you know paracord it knots it twists it does all sorts of annoying things so this just takes a moment and I have to say working with my arms at full stretch the whole time so that I can see my camera phone screen is a bit annoying it's actually started to wear my arms out Oof. anyway so keep pulling it through keep pulling it through and here comes the end there we go okay now I have two ends together but what I want is I want the folded piece for the next stage so I'm going to pull this through keeping both pieces together so what I'm doing is I'm applying more pressure on the side that I'm pulling and just letting the, the, this hand slip so that when I get to the other end it's basically in half perfectly in half it doesn't matter if if the lines twist over on the way down so long as that doesn't happen that's annoying um, that's really bloody annoying there we go okay so now I've got the midway point that is half halfway down the length now this is important because the next stage I'll show you god I hope I can do this now uh, Actually, I'm thinking at this stage, I'm going to reposition the camera and do a cut here. So, I'm just going to tie a knot in this so that I don't lose center. It's just the standard square knot for a minute. And I will be back in a second. Your time. Joy of editing. Okay, I've uh, repositioned the camera. Um, so, I tied a knot in this, as you saw before. You don't need to do this. I'm just doing it so I don't lose my halfway point. Uh, bear with me. I may even edit all this out, I don't know yet. Uh, if it goes up raw then you'll you know see all the mistakes. Uh, okay so we have the halfway point, we have our strap. Now some straps uh, have a, a loop that goes through them at the end uh, in which case you don't have to double it over, you can just run it through, one side through, so that it's you know through the loop and then do what I'm about what I do after that but if you've got a strap like mine that doesn't have any loops that you can run the paracord through we're gonna create a loop using just the paracord so it's all one piece there are no cuts it's just one piece of paracord around our strap okay what I'm gonna do carefully is hold the center point take one side of the paracord and I'm just gonna pull it through okay I'm just gonna pull the whole thing through there's a lot of it and you'll, you'll find yourself pulling a lot of paracord around okay now I'm going to pin with my index finger the halfway point approximately anyway to the back of the very edge of the strap okay I'm then going to create a loop and start a cobra stitch so what we do is we create a loop and run the end on the right hand side over the strap we take the other side of our paracord, run it over the, the hanging thread of the loop, around the back of the strap, and pull it through the right hand loop. And then just pull it all the way through. This is um, a cobra stitch. It's a very standard cobra stitch. And I'm sorry about the noise in the background. One of my dogs is grooming himself. Spike? Spike? Stop. Thank you. Anyway, so pulling all the way through, pulling it all the way through, all the way through, and then carefully cinch the knot up tight, but not too tight. You don't want to crinkle the strap. You just want it tight to the point where the strap would crinkle. Now, as you can see, we have, uh, on our right-hand side, we have a loop going over. Whichever side the loop going over is going over, I hope you can see this, is the side that you want to do an over uh, you want to do your loop on for the next one so again loop over strap over behind the strap sorry uh, other side over behind the strap and through the loop okay and you'll get the hang of this pretty quickly um, this is just a very very basic one of the most common paracord stitches you'll you'll see used uh, just called cobra stitch again tighten it up nice and snug to the cord and then cinch the knots just push the knots up so that they're tight okay and then again we go over the right hand side 
under, round and through. Okay. There are uh, tutorials out there that are better illustrated than this one on how to do a cobra stitch. Um, oh, oops, I'm pulling the wrong piece. So if, you, if, I, if I've not been clear, you'll be able to find a better tutorial on the cobra stitch itself. But this is more about how, you know, the, the methodology behind wrapping a strap and why you'd want to do that. So again, I'm going to come through and we can just keep doing this until we reach the other side. Uh, I'm going to keep video in. If the video runs long, I'll just cut this out and sh skip ahead to the um, to the other side and show you what I do next. Okay, so oh, whoops, almost did that wrong. I find that it works best just to. Uh, I'm not having a good time with this today. I'm, you see, I see. I'm I'm doing this at a very funny angle for the sake of being able to see what you can see on the video. I'm trying to keep things visible. Okay. Okay, so nice and tight. Everything needs to be nice and snug. Everything nice and snug. Lots of paracord to whip through. Tighten it up. You want to keep cinching these up. I like to do them all nice and tight. Now you might find if you do them really nice and tight, you end up with quite a bit of excess paracord, maybe a foot or so uh, on either side at the end. Uh, that's okay though. I mean, you know, it's not a lot to waste, and it's a sign that you're doing a good job. Um, again, you, if you're good at cobra stitch, you could do this a hell of a lot quicker. I'm, I'm deliberately doing this slowly to illustrate. So you can, you know, see what I'm doing and how. But Cobra Stitch is used most commonly on the, um, what do they call them, survival bracelets or whatever the, they, they call them these days. So this is like a survival bracelet that serves a dual function. Um, it allows you a nice handhold on your pack, but also it's a, a, a very convenient way of carrying a large single piece of paracord uh, without it occupying space inside the pack, it's better to have it on the pack than in the pack. Um, or at least have some on the pack and then the rest in the pack. Because, you know, paracord gets quite difficult to work with when it's wet. It's worth keeping in mind. Uh, that said, you can get uh, the same stuff that you'd spray on um, textile motorcycle gear. Uh, it's like a form of Scotch Guard. It isn't actually Scotch Guard because Scotch Guard's designed designed for use indoors. It's not very hardy, so when it goes through a storm, Scotch Guard wears off pretty quickly. But it's a t it's a rain repellent or a water repellent that you can spray on paracord as well. It's not listed on the approved materials list, but you can. I've done it, and then uh, the paracord never really gets wet. You get wet in between the the weave, but you don't actually get water inside the cord, and uh, that's that's a good thing. It makes it easier to keep working with. So yeah, that's worth considering. Uh, oh boy, da, 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 da. Now, while I'm doing this, I know that I'm going to get questions about the uh, screens in the background. There are three of them. They are three 26-inch flat panel monitors. Um, that I use for my work and uh, I've just got them on the desktop at the moment with a, a randomly rotating background wallpaper and people are going to ask me what the wallpapers are and where they're from uh, they're from digitalblasphemy.com uh, it is a paid subscription thing but it's a one-time payment per year it's a very small amount and you get some lovely uh, triple monitor wallpapers they do double and single monitor wallpapers as well uh, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, God, I'm just tightening these up, so giving them a good, firm push, and then tighten the last stitch. And then again. And remember, if you ever can't remember which side to lead off with, and by lead off I mean to to do your loop with. Uh, this, sorry, this is. I'm going to quickly adjust the camera again, and then I'll continue that chain of thought. Okay, there we go. Yeah, if you if you ever forget which side you 
uh, should lead off with, look for the side with the loop going over at the end, so where the paracord end is coming out of a loop. And that's the side to go over the strap. Okay, and that swaps each time, but it's just if you ever lose track, and it is easy to do. Um, I've done so many uh, cobra weaves now on various things, uh, wrapping paracord on all my packs and so forth, uh, that I'm pretty much in autopilot mode now. I just do it blindly, but I'm about halfway down the strap once I've tightened it up. Um, take your time, do nice, neat, consistent stitches. Uh, I've seen a lot of people with loose, loose stitches in their weave, and it just looks nasty. Um, so take your time, do a nice, neat job. It'll also make the paracord easier to undo when, if and when you ever need to, to have nice, consistent thickness stitches. Uh, remembering to always cinch them tight at the end of each uh, stitch. There we go. So, and I'm also sorry it's a bit dark as well. Um, not ideal lighting at the moment. Oh God, what have I just done? I've lost the. <laughs> I've lost the end. So I'm going to undo this one. I've I've really messed this up. I can't find the end of the the cord now. It's all. There we go. It all got tangled up. Okay, I'll do that again. There we go. Yeah, less than ideal lighting. It's kind of a bit silly because I look at that. Look, knots in the paracord. If you when that happens, and it happens a lot, it's a lot like uh, electrical wire and network cable. It it will knot itself very easily, and uh, it, it's very awkward. Yeah. Anyway, while while I'm doing this, just quickly divert divert my attention with this. This is a little mini flashlight I picked up today. Not very expensive. Uh, LED laser P3. This one. It's single AAA battery. Pretty small, but it has a nice party trick. So that is uh, the main normal. That's a normal flashlight beam. But if I pull the lens forward, it now turns into a concentrated spot. See. And that's quite good. Um, so spread beam, spot beam, spread beam, spot beam. Anyway, and that attaches uh, in a sheath uh, through Molly webbing. Right, carry this on, get this finished. Stop wasting your time. I'll be quiet now. I'm gonna, I'll cut back once I've got to the end. Okay, so I've reached the end of the strap, okay? And I've, I've cinched them up fairly tight. Now that is a single weave grab. That might be enough for a lot of you, actually. Um, and if the strap was thicker to begin with, of course, this would be much more substantial. I'm sorry, that was me getting an email. Okay, so that's a single weave. Now, I like a double weave. It gives me a nice padded grip, uh, which I like. And uh, I think my, my missus tried the double weave. She said she liked it, so that's what I said I was going to do, a double double wrap. Uh, now, once you get to the end, things change ever so slightly. Let's see if I can bring this in close enough to show. Okay, it's really not easy. Um, okay, so we, we've got a, a, a standard stitch that ends here. Okay, hang on, what I'm going to do is... I'll get the flashlight just to show it a bit more clearly. Okay, oh, no, it's, no, it's overexposed. Never mind. Okay, so we have a stitch that ends here. Uh, and what we want to do is we just want to do another cobra weave the other way, back the way we came. So, what we do, I hope I get this in shot, is I lead off again, same as I do before, but this time, I've got some twisting going on in the cord, so I'm just going to pull the cord through. Yeah, quickly. Okay, right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cinch it down basically on top or in between in between the last two on the previous layer. And cinch that up tight. Not too tight, but tight enough that it, it's you know not going to come undone or come loose. Okay, and then and now I just go back the other way. Exactly the same way. So it really is very straightforward. It's just a double cobra weave. You're just cobra weaving in both directions. 
and put placing the second set of weaves in between the first two gives you a nice padded grip um, it's quick it's e well I say it's not quick there's nothing worth doing in life is quick but uh, it, it is easy it's simple it's quite therapeutic if you like to relax uh, you can put a film on that's what I did when I did the first wrap uh, but obviously I'm recording a video here so I want to make it quiet in the background um, yeah, and it's just a nice relaxing little task to do. I'll keep recording for a minute, but I may or may not edit anything out from here, and then I'll recap at the end. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's going nice. And we just keep doing this until we get to the other end, and then when we get to the other end, we cast off. In other words, we finish up, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, it's pretty straightforward as well. Just keep pulling the cord through. You see, I've still got plenty, plenty of cord length to work with. Um, I'm probably going to have quite a lot of excess, because like I say, I just hastily rushed a long length of cord. But uh, you don't want to end up with too little. You always want to make sure you wear on the side of more cord rather than less. Um, and obviously, if, if your grab strap is already longer than this one, or wider, or both you're going to use a lot more paracord than I did. Now you might think of that as a negative but it's, it really is a positive because a single long length of paracord in the field if you ever do need it is, is going to be a lot quicker and easier for you to work with because of course you can always cut it down than a lot of small lengths that you have to uh, tie together. Um, and of course I should, always, I should always stress if you don't already know how to attach two lengths of paracord properly. I don't mean melting the ends together, that is not strong, I wouldn't trust that. But I mean, if you don't know how to tie two lengths of rope together, you, you really should learn, uh, because that is a critical critical piece of, of, of knowledge. Um, I quite like doing a, a trucker's hitch on either end, because it, it, it's, it eas it's easy enough to undo when you need to separate the lengths, but the more force there is on, on the line, the tighter it gets as opposed to the looser, which which is good. Okay, so carry on going. You might notice that my desk is a um, an industrial workbench. <laughs> anyway, keep going. I think I may have screwed that. No, that's right. Uh, keep going. And we just keep doing this until we get to the end. I'm not that far away. Look. Again, remember to cinch them up every now and then just to make sure they're all nice and tight. Uh, that side. Over, under, through. Tighten it up. Over, oh. I like to do these quite quick. Once you, you know, if it wasn't for the awkward angle that I'm working at here, this, this would have been done 10-15 minutes ago. So it really, it, you know, a cord this, a strap this length, you're probably only talking 15, 20 minutes to do a really neat job if you're good at doing cobra stitch. Um, it's, you know, this isn't the neatest one I've ever done either. It, it's pretty good though. It works. There we go. Coming to the end, and as you can see, less paracord. Uh, which is good because it makes it quicker. Pull it through, pull that through, pull it through. Okay, and I'll be doing this again uh, once the khaki cord arrives. Anyway, and um, what I might do is pull this back to a single layer, and then cut it, and then put the other one on. It just depends whether I value, you know, whether I need a long length or a two short lengths. As I say, you can tie two short lengths together, but there's a comfort to me in having a nice single long length of cord. There we go. I'm getting to the end of this again now. It's, it's not too bad. I can always rework some of this later. Um, that's the beauty of a cobra stitch. You can just undo it and go back as far as you need to correct any mistakes and uh, 
yeah, it's just a very forgiving. The key, like I say again, I'm stressing this, but I keep saying it, is to at least approximate how much paracord you need so you don't waste a ton. You know, the first time I started working with paracord, I must have wasted the better part of a hundred feet in the first several projects just because I didn't know how much I needed. Uh, but uh, I quite like the formula I've concocted. It seems to to work pretty well. In this case, I've added a few inches on each layer, uh, on each when I was rolling it, folding it over. I added at least a few inches on the fold, so that adds up to a couple of feet um, of of excess. But that's not too bad. Oops, not the camera. Never mind. Okay. Now we're back down to the end. Always cinch them up. Make sure that they're good. Now, tighten the last one off nice and tight. Then, either take your scissors or your knife. In this case, I'm just going to use scissors, just, just because it's, you know, the end. And get a nice cut. Pretty close. As close as you, as you dare, really, to the, to the weave that you've done. That's another email. Sorry about the noise. Okay, that's excess. Pull it a little bit, and then cut off the excess. Okay, so I'll show you the amount of excess I've got. Um, it's about that's about two feet in one length. I'll just roll it up until I can fit it all in frame. Uh, that's that's how much I've wasted on one side, and about the same on the other. So there is a bit of wastage. Now, <laughs> this is a bit where you've got to be really careful because this stuff's waterproof but I don't know how fire resistant it is I think it's polyester coated nylon and that melts so because we're gonna melt the end now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the bag at an angle so that if anything drips yeah it, it will drip onto well me actually at, at this angle rather than onto the bag I mean my trousers doesn't matter too much so we hold it at a good angle and then we melt we're gonna melt the end back we want it to get a little flame on it, and then we're going to fold it. Don't use the bottom of your lighter for this. It's a stupid idea. I shouldn't have done that. Um, and we fold it on. So it's just stick. It's stuck on there. Now it can't come undone without you pulling that apart. And again on the other side, it's going to be a bit harder for you to see because of the angle, but I'm just melting the frayed end, letting it ignite ever so slightly, and then pushing it back. Again, I've used the bottom of the lighter. Don't do that, because light, gas lighters, when you heat them up, can explode. It's a silly trick. I shouldn't do it. It's a gamble. But, you know, I've done it before. Again, I shouldn't. It doesn't excuse it. But anyway, there we have a double-wrapped grab strap. Done in paracord. Uh, try and get a bit of better light on it, if I can, without drowning the colour. Uh, hang on without drowning it too much in light, but there we go. That's... Oh, it's really impossible lighting in this room, it's terrible. Um, yeah. And there we have it. Double wrap. Nice, chunky, padded grab handle. Uh, you could do this with shoulder straps as well. I'll just pop that away. We could do that with uh, shoulder straps to make them padded and less painful on your, on your, um, your shoulders. A uh, little unexpected camera malfunction on the phone there. It said I reached the maximum length of recording time, so this is an unexpected cut. But I was saying uh, you can use this same technique on uh, shoulder straps. You can use it on uh, waist straps. You can use it on anything, really. And it just gives you a really nice padded... I mean, that is a lot more comfortable now than the thinner uh, nylon strapping. So... Yeah, when comfort and grip is a factor, that that's pretty damn good right there. And it's not going to come off unless I unless I, you know, break this melted seal at the end of each side. And they're they're pretty inconspicuous too. But people won't even notice they're there unless you point it out. Again, this isn't the neatest weave I've ever done. You you take your time, do a neater job, and you know, be something you're proud of. So um, if you have 
any questions, preferably not related to the background equipment, uh, please feel free to ask them, and I'll, I'll try to answer as many as possible. If there are any other paracord-related uh, techniques you'd like to see, feel free to ask, and, you know, I may be able to show you. Um, and enjoy, you know. That's it. One bag made more useful. Thanks for watching.